Hi, this is Professor Cummings, and this is the first of our series on Lean Six Sigma. You're in Module 1, Lecture 1 of that first module. Uh, in Lecture 1, we're going to be going over Lean and how Lean, is, you're basically the background of Lean. Uh, then we'll go over Le uh, Six Sigma in, mod in Lecture 2 of this first module. And then in the third module, we'll go over how they work together in being implemented into Lean Six Sigma. You know, since all you know, both of those are actually uh, concepts in the, their own right. So for this one, our learning objectives. So when you're done with this video, my goal at, at the end of this video is for you to have a basic understanding of Lean. So you understand what Lean is, have some ideas what the goals of Lean are when Lean is implemented into a company. Uh, I'll give you some history of scientific management you know some of where this all comes from because it does have a very interesting history to it uh, we're going to identify seven forms of waste and you should be able to know those seven forms of waste when we're done and then I'm going to introduce you to some of the lean tools uh, that are going to be used to actually implement the concept of lean into a process so to start off here what exactly is lean well, we can get a definition of that simple enough, and it is a systematic technique used to eliminate non-value added activities from a process. So it's something that gets implemented or on a process, and it is to eliminate the non-value added activities. So if we look at these two examples, I'm gonna be making references to the, the one on the right quite frequently, or the one on the left quite frequently. Uh, that's an old classic footage of Lucy and Ethel in the I Love Lucy show where she's working in a chocolate factory. And it is a classic scene of a lot of waste and a lot of uh, missteps and a lot of lost product. Over on the right, you see a series of workers in a electronics plant, and that is the picture perfect of a lean organization. So there is very little waste in their operations. And what the difference between the one on the left and the one on the right is, if you look at the one on the left, there will be a lot of wasted movements, a lot of wasted product, and a lot of rework. Now, let's think about what exactly is value. So what this word value really means. There are a lot of people have an idea of value, but uh, you have to really think about this in, in terms of a business, in terms of a manufacturing or any other type of, of business. So what exactly is value? Value is activities that the customer is willing to pay for. That is what a va that is what is considered value. So if someone is going to pay you for it, then there is value in it. If you are not being paid for it and if you're still doing it, then you are not adding value. What Lean does is it eliminates those things that you don't get paid for. So Lean focuses on getting rid of wasteful activities things you're not getting paid to do, things that don't add value to your customer, and things that don't add to your bottom line. So a little bit of background on lean and this whole idea of getting rid of waste. You know, a business can't be profitable if you're constantly indulging in wasteful activities. You know, you can get away with that for a little while and you can get away with that to some degree, but there's a certain point when you cannot survive if you're constantly paying for things that your customer is not willing to reimburse you for. So this idea was first tackled by someone named Frederick Taylor, and he's known as the father of scientific management. What he is not known for is having a charming personality. He was not a, a very likable guy uh, from what I've read in person. He was very rigid, uh, tend to view most people as basically lazy. And this the way this impacted his concepts of management style and his theories was he felt that if you could take any person uh, you would have to actually be able to time them down to look for any of their waste in their movements and waste in their activities and he was the whole idea of using a stopwatch to look and see how long it takes for, to perform a particular task and be able to hold people to this type of standard so from him we wound up with things like time studies you know, the idea of the industrial engineer coming out to the plant floor and actually looking at a process over and over again and seeing how long each measured movement is going to take and implementing standardized work. In other words, there were a certain number of accepted steps to accomplish a specific task. 
you know that way you know that everyone is doing it the same way and no time is being wasted so that was his way of eliminating waste out of a process the next one is a little bit more famous he's Henry Ford and most of you know of Henry Ford in relation to the automobile as well as his uh, innovation as the assembly line but let's think of an assembly line in a different way what is an assembly line actually doing it is putting your process in order and making it so that it is in a logical sequence so he is responsible for sequential operations getting your process in a sequence to the point where you can actually put a conveyor belt or an assembly line in place and have a complete car roll off the end of your assembly line so he came with the idea of the assembly line and putting operations in close proximity to each other so operations close together and then last is Piaggiano, who actually came about in or his made his big contribution during the 1960s uh, in Toyota production system <clears throat> and which also later became known as lean and what he came up with was this whole idea of getting rid of waste again from the process and coming up with even more importantly several different methods and techniques to tackle waste so with him came things such as Kanban, Kaizen, as well as just in time. You know, the idea of leaving, putting uh, companies close enough together where you can get your tooling on your floor or your inventory on your floor just when you need it. So what do all these three men have in common? They focused on the elimination of non-value added activities. There's a fo focus is on the elimination of non-value added activities. Now, in looking at these uh, non-value added activities, Taichi Ono came up with this idea of Muda. In other words, he categorized waste into seven different forms. So, and that word is Muda that he actually used. One was motion, unnecessary motion. One is transportation. And when you think about it, you know, if you live in Ohio and you're getting bananas, from Jamaica there is very little added to the value when you send a plane or send those bananas over on a boat a plane a truck to get them to Ohio you know but yet you're paying for them they don't change the banana the banana stays the same so that was a form of waste it was something you had to do but it was still a form of waste and you know if you could eliminate from that process that would actually add to the value of the customer and take away a cost from from the owner another one is waiting so when you are waiting for a, machi a machine to deliver you something or waiting for your bananas to show up that's a form of waste another one is overproduction overproduction usually stems from either making something to schedule or making something in preparation for something if ahead of you going down then there's inventory you know that's leaving stuff either on the shelf or leaving things or creating more so it's a, sort of a, a, an offshoot of overproduction and you know again when you have a lot of inventory you've got money and capital tied up that's not actually being used then there's rework rework is something just going back for repairs uh, something sent back that wasn't created right the first time and then there's over process not to be confused with over production now you can see the picture I showed up here that I think is gonna demonstrate over processing and, and this is things such as creating a smoother surface finish than the customer required uh, putting a, a paint on a product the customer never asked for to be painted uh, going through extra machining operations or other type of uh, manufacturing operations that the customer never requested you know in other words bad communications with the customer over processing and those are the seven types of waste so now that you know that you're looking for waste how does a company go about finding waste what do you do to actually find the waste well one thing that is is actually uh, kind of nerve-wracking is that most people in an organization only know their part of the organization so to be able to map out the process be able to make a uh, look at the flow of, of how a product goes through your system can be a very eye-opening experience 
And what you do for that is you have something known as a value stream map. Now what a value stream map is, it actually shows the process flow, but it actually shows data tied to every step of that flow. So what you can see here in a process map in this example of one, is things such as cycle time, you know, cycle time is C over T, so two minute cycle time, as well as a change over time of 60 minutes, and as well as an uptime for this milling operation. Here you see a wait operation here that's 10 days, another wait that's 12 days, another wait that's 8 days, and then you have 30 days with a total lead time of 65 days, a value added of 17 minutes. Now you could see this in any process and for a lot of people this would be the first time they'd realize how much waste they actually have in the process. So it's called a value stream map. Now, how do you make this value stream map? Like I said, most people the, don't have a really good picture, a really good handle on the waste in their process. So what you would do is come up with this exercise to develop a value stream map, which would involve not only a large group of people from your company, from different parts of the organization, but typically a, a large space to where you can actually create and post a map to create this value stream map. You know this graphical representation of your process now one way that normally do this is like I said come in with a, a nice big area nice big space where you can actually have a lot of room to maneuver a lot of room to actually draw uh, typically you start with post-it notes and people start to post different parts of the process and throughout this part of the process you start to you're able to make movements make arrangements until you can come up with a more defined value stream map since nobody knows all of the whole story so so again this whole process and we'll go into this in later modules is a way of developing that value stream map so that you can have that visual representation and immediately start identifying areas where you have waste so how is waste actually addressed well this goes back to the Toyota system our Toyota production system and that is through the use of lean tools. Now this list is not all inclusive of lean tools but it does show you know some of those lean tools and one is Kanban which is just an organization tool reduce motion reduce inventory going to a pull system you know this helps eliminate overproduction and inventory problems uh, what that means is instead of you creating your step in the process in the assembly line and shoving it onto the next guy it doesn't move until that station actually requires it so it's being pulled instead of pushed through the system 5s another way of reducing motion you know potential defects you know that looking at uh, different ways of organizing Pokeyoke, which literally is an error proofing system a way of reducing defects and the one is the use of tack time attack time is just staying in sequence or in harmony with your customers or in rhythm with your customers another way of avoiding overproduction and controlling inventory and then bottleneck analysis which as the name implies reduces the bottleneck or waiting and controlling your inventory and that's just a few of the lean tools out there there are several lean tools out there that we'll be talking about but that's just a few just to get you started so here is that scene I found a gif of uh, Lucien F working the chocolate factory you know, when you look at this GIF, how much waste, how much Muda can you identify? How many of the seven types of Muda can you see here? Go ahead and take a few seconds to kind of find that. Well, what I was going to look at here is see the lace waste as well as try and tie it to a lean tool. So we can clearly see there's a lot of motion, you know, a lot of non-standard work and a lot of movement. We also have obviously there's transportation, which is to some degree necessary, but still, you know, that still is considered a form of waste. You know, these can be addressed through a better Kanban, a pull system, because they obviously are not pulling, it's actually being pushed upon them, as well as attack time, something to put them in sequence or in harmony with the customer. There's clearly overproduction, you know, they're not able to keep up with the line. You know, so this could be looked at with a you know 5s and bottleneck analysis there's gonna be some rework and, and definitely the way they're handling that work and then so summary lean is just a method to systematically eliminate waste 
So it's just a way of getting rid of waste and just following a, a set of rules, a set of measured steps. The idea of recognizing waste goes all the way back to Frederick Taylor. So Frederick Taylor, he came up with standardized work and time studies. You know, you, there are seven types of waste. We went over those here, waiting, rework, motion, transportation, overproduction, overprocessing, and inventory. And value stream mapping is just a graphical tool that helps to visualize what the waste is in your process. And then there are several lean tools designed to address waste. So you can always find a tool to try and deal with waste in one form or another. So some questions. So if you can't answer this question, go back and rewatch this video or go back to the part that you might be a little shaky on. One is, what exactly is lean? Can you answer that question without looking at your notes? You know, what are seven forms of waste? Seven, the seven forms of waste and give examples of each one. What kinds of waste did Henry Ford address? And when you think about what Henry Ford did, what, what seven forms of waste or which of the seven forms of Muda did he actually address? And when you consider what Henry, or excuse me, Frederick Taylor did, what kinds of waste did he address? What is important about a value stream map? Well, this is Professor Cummings, and this is just a brief overview of Lean. Uh, come back for other lectures in this module, and before we get to, we'll go through the rest of the class. Thanks for watching.